Okay, can everybody hear me? <coughs> Excuse me, let me know. You should see the slide and hear me too, both. So today, first thing I'm gonna do is, okay, great. First thing I'm going to do is just go through here some information about the class if you're interested in the class that I teach on what I do. And then tonight I thought we'd do something different where we're just gonna have charts up and I'm gonna show you a live uh, gap tonight. It's something that I would look at. And then I thought we'd also talk about the market today. <clears throat> okay, so we're gonna do something a little bit different here. We're gonna spend most of the little lecture here about charts, the market, and we're gonna look at a live gap, okay? So although this topic is, for the webinar is earn $20,000 a month shorting stocks in 30 minutes daily, I'm gonna focus more today on really how you're able to do that, um, how you're able to find shorts, and the philosophy behind trading gaps and also making this kind of money very quickly. So this is me, for those of you that don't know me, and if you're interested in anything I do or teach, you can email me at melissathestockswish.com or call me at 929-3200-GAP. And I also think it's good to follow me at any one of these sites, particularly YouTube. I do a lot of videos on YouTube. So I did do a lecture that is on YouTube where I talked about what kind of trader you are. Even though we're talking about making 20 grand a month here, which would be an advanced trader amount, I still think it's important for people to realize you do not have to risk the amount of money to make this in the market. You can risk less and still make money and be profitable. Don't box yourself into a corner or don't box yourself in if you really don't have the funds to risk $1,000, for example, in a trade. Okay, because that's the kind of money you're really going to have to risk in order to make 20 grand a month. And if you can't do that, it doesn't mean that you should not trade at all. Okay, it doesn't mean that you should wait until you have the funds available to risk a thousand because there is a learning process involved with trading. And also, you want to start making money as soon as possible. Even if you had a small account, by small I'm saying, say $2,500 because that's the size of most prop starter accounts. You could risk a hundred bucks and make a hundred bucks a day. And there's nothing wrong with that. You could grow a small $2,500 account up to a $5,000 account or more rather quickly if you were in the trading room following me. Now, if anybody has any questions, you can go through and write them in there as we go along tonight. I will see them and answer them. So I did this lecture, it's on YouTube, where I talk about different types of traders and I'm just pointing this out here now. There's a practice phase, beginner trader, intermediate trader, and advanced. And advanced trader is where you'd want to be to make this kind of money. Again, you'd have to risk between $1,000 and $1,500 a trade. Also, it's really about the wins. You have to have more winners than losers. And that's an important part of trading no matter what strategy you trade because you can't have too many down days. If you do, you will have drawdowns in your account and that will affect you negatively, not only financially with the account, but also emotionally, you're gonna have a hard time uh, sometimes if I get in a, in a, in a mode where I'm to have, you know, two bad days in a row, I just take a break. Now that really hasn't happened for a while, but I know that about myself. I know it's unusual for me to even have two losing days in a row. So make sure that you're double, triple checking yourself where you're at emotionally and financially with trading. Now here's all the trades since the beginning of January. I'm not going to go through all these again. This is on YouTube. But I want to point out here two things. One, if you're a beginner trader and you were in the room with me, you could have made $2,400 a week in the last nine weeks, and that is fantastic results, even with a small account. Intermediate, almost five grand a week, that's more than enough for many people to live on. And again, advanced is hitting well over 20 grand. You don't have to uh, risk this much, but that was part of the lecture today. So, if you have questions about margin, if you have questions about places to trade, you can always email me that and I'll give you referrals. I don't want to talk about that tonight. Benefit, of course, of day trading is you can trade at home. And here's my class. Now, I'm going to go over the class dates, the special I'm running through tonight, and then I'm going to switch it over to the charts. Mimi uh, got kicked out of the room. I'm sorry about that. I'm taping it, Mimi, so you can watch it on YouTube. 
Um, so don't worry. I'm going to pull the charts. The important part once you're going to teach about charts, I didn't, I didn't talk about yet. We just went over some of the results from earlier in the year and March. Anyways, the bearish class, I teach two classes. <laughs> but the main class I teach on gaps is the bearish class. It's April 14th and 15th from 9 to 5 Eastern time. Cost of the class is $54.99 classes online. So that's for April. Second quarter earnings season starts next week. The bullish class I teach once a year. I don't do this all the time. I don't do it even more than once a year because usually we're focusing on shorts. If you're interested in learning how to go long, particularly if you're doing options or swing trades, this is a very important class for that. Cost of this class is the same. Points are different. The system is different. It's, it's not the same going long as short. I will tell you that. Interesting but true. If you want to do both, you can sign up for both and save 20%. And I do think it's important to do the shorts and the longs, but if you want to start out, the class to do is a class of 14th and 15th, which is the short class. But again, the bullish class I only do once a year. I'm running a special. Also, if you sign up for both the Golden Gap and the Trends course, it's $59.99. You do the Trends class, it's for long-term trends. That class will be in April. You will save $500 if you sign up for both. And the Easter special extended through today. If you want to sign up for the Golden Gap by today, one, either bullish or bearish or both and you'd save 20% if you sign up for both. You will get the trading room free to the end of the year, the options letter free to the end of the year, and the wealth manifestation class, which was today. We will do it again this year, but I don't have the date yet, okay? This is a great deal. It saves you, and you will get all my trades for the rest of 2018, and we're gonna go over one option trade tonight, we're gonna look at a gap tonight, and we're gonna talk about the market. Any questions, though, specifically before I flip to the charts? I'm gonna take another drink of water about the class itself or anything or the special before I flip over. You will, the class is in the room, the trading room is here. Now let me flip. <laughs> the live trading room, I don't know if everybody can see the chart, is in this room right now that you're in. The password changes weekly. The room is open from 8.30 usually to 11. Sometimes, we close it earlier if we're done trading, 10, 15, 10, 30, but we could stay open to 11. Now let's talk about what is a gap, because <laughs> that's a strategy that I focus on and do. This is a live gap. It's happening right now. Just looked it up. Boom. <laughs> this is an earnings gap. So SWCH, okay, here we are. It's happening live. Now, how do I know? I'm going to take this little jiggy off. So show pre or post market. Boom. I click it off. Now it's gone. So this closed at 1585. Guess what? It's 543. The stock reported had earnings. Looks like it happened immediately here right at 415-ish. Whatever time that was. And it dropped like a brick. Low in the spar here. Look at the top of the corner in the square. Low is 1170. So at one point here, just from 415 and beyond, the stock hit $11.70. In fact, let's look at that. This is a daily chart. So this is live right now. It's trading at 1429. So it's lifted from that 1170. But this is all happening at night. Oh, that's it. Oh, this is why I never heard of this thing before. It's only out for a couple of months. I was wondering though what this was. There you have it. Look, it just opened on the 6th of October. That's why I never heard of this. Wow, so this was at 1170 just a couple minutes ago. Let's look at the one minute. <laughs> so this is a live gap that's happening. So you can look at gaps at night, you can look at gaps in the morning, whatever you want to do. But you find them, and then what you learn from me in the class is you would learn how to find them and rate them to determine what to do with this thing. Is this a long? Is this a short? Is it nothing? Okay, so here you have, this did drop at 415, dropped like a brick, all the way down 14, 424. So 424, this hit the low down here, 1170. So this sold off when the earnings were announced. Then it rallied back and it's lifted quite a lot. 
but it's still down. Let me take it over. So I don't know where this will be tomorrow morning, but this is a gap. If you were with me, you would get up and rate, or you could rate it tonight. If you rate it tonight, you still have to double, triple check it in the morning. Make sure it's down. Make sure it's still close to the same price point because again, this is moving. You saw here this was at a different number than it's even now, and it could even be down at a different number, or it could be up. And that's the exciting thing about gaps, and also why it, you know there's so much volatility and momentum if you learn how to trade them and you can trade them right. Okay. So what a gap is, and this is I'm just going to go over it very basic, is the difference between the close and the open. So if this stock closed, which it did today at 4 o'clock Eastern time, which is the close of the U.S. market at 1585, pretend this was tomorrow morning. Pretend it was 930, which it's not, but pretend tomorrow, 930 a.m., the market opens, boom. Pretend this was opening. Ooh, there, it just dropped a little bit more. Pretend it's opening at, at 1415. Well, what does that mean? It means the stock gapped. It gapped down. It's the difference between the close and the open. That's what's happening in this right here. I never heard of it before because it's only been out for a few months. Switch. Whatever this is. Never played this. But anyways, this is something I'd rate to determine if it's a long or short because it's gapping. And as I said earlier, I prefer to do gap downs. Why? Because I think stocks that gap down can have faster moves than things that gap up. It's just the way it works. Panic sets in quickly, very, very quickly. And I am an impatient, impatient person to begin with, so I prefer to make money fast and get out, okay? Now let's look at an example of that in the market today. And ask me any questions if you have any. <laughs> Let's look at the SPY. So this is the, the an ETF of the SPY to 500. I'm going to, actually before I do that, I'm going to quiz anybody. What's happening in the market right here? Again, it's time of the day. It's 548. What's happening here? Is the market gapping down or is the market gapping up? I'm looking at the spiders. Can anybody tell me? And if you're new, I know this is totally new, but if we're trading here tonight at 257.50, are we gapping up or are we gapping down? Come on, some of you are here. I'm trying to quiz you. Maybe you can learn something. Nobody wants to guess, nobody wants to try. Well, look at what I said. 257.54 is where we closed. So if we're at 257.55, we're not gapping at all. Look at that. Do you see that? So here it was, here's the two minute chart. 257.54, we're gapping up a penny. It's nothing. Does everybody see that? So the market's really not gapping at all. Now, it doesn't mean it's not going to gap tomorrow morning, but as far as after hours tonight, we're flat. We're what I'd say flat neutral. Okay. Now, let's look at what I was talking about, about the 30-minute stuff. I'm going to take off the stuff tonight and... I'm going to show you this morning because we're talking about trading, making money in 30 minutes. So what do I focus on? What's the time of the day I focus on? I focus on between 9.30 and 10 a.m. Why? Why, 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 why? Because that is the time of the day that institutions tend to take positions on or off, whether long or short. It's not to say that institutions, and by institutions, I mean big banks, hedge funds, huge big professional traders. It's not to say that they won't put trades on during the live trading day. Of course they do. But you see huge big moves that usually happen in that first half an hour. 
And usually I can read directional bias of a stock or an ETF will have for the entire day within that first 30 minute period. Sometimes I can read it in the first five minutes, sometimes the first one. The market today was a short, it was a short, and I'm gonna go pull up the daily chart in a minute, but I wanna show you the time here, the one minute chart, because the market opened here at 9.30. Down here's the clock, take it across, take it across, take it across, here's 10, 10 a.m. Here, let me just get rid of this so it's easier to see. There's 10. So do you see that this was a short today? This is again the SPY. So here's the rally. You would have shorted the rally in the market today to have a move. And this move is a pretty good move. 263 in here, boom, dropped in here more than a buck. A dollar fifty actually if we took it all the way down to 10. You could trade every day between 9.30 and 10, in, out, in, out, in, out, but you gotta get the direction right. You've gotta know the targets for something and you have to know what stock or ETF to be watching, which is why you come and learn from me. But anyways, today the market was a short and I wanna show you that the move happened within the first 30 minutes. All you really need is that period. Relay, relay 10 bot, I don't know what you're putting in there. You're putting one Q in there for some reason. Is somebody having trouble getting in? Relay bot, I don't know what you're doing. Anyways, um, what was I gonna say? Th that time of the day, that time, okay, in that morning is critical. It's critical for you to make money. All you really need is one move. I call it the money move each day within that period. Could be 50 cents, could be a dollar, could be $2. You never know. But you are looking for one move per day, usually, when you're getting in and you want to get in and get out. And that's not to say you couldn't have held it. Now, I'm going to put this back over here. This was, here, I'm going to make this really, really small so you can see it. This was the whole move the market had today. Here, I'm going to show you this is a one minute chart. Again, I squished this to show you. All right, this is a one minute chart of the market. Looks like we made the low of the day in the market around two o'clock. Okay, so that's not surprising. But we basically fell all day. So you could have you could have really held this for a huge move. In fact, the SPY today almost moved $10 from what the short entry would have been. It would have been 263. Low in the market today was down in here 254, 254.72. So we are about a buck seventy shy of a $10 drop off in the market today. Now again, you don't need to trade all day. The, the time of the day you'd be in and out would be usually be in the morning, but I'm telling you that the market drop today was a huge trade, whether you got in and out at first beginning or you, and you took it all day or held it, it was a big trade. And I did call an option put in the market last week, which, which followed through really, really well today. But the point is that you would see what's happening here. You would see what's happening in the morning and you would see what's happening in the gap. And you would know what to do. The market did what? The market gapped down today. Hold on, let me get back. How do I know it gapped down? I can see it. I saw it in the morning. I saw it in the pre-market. Here's the close of Thursday night. Market was off on Friday, close. Closed here, 263.49, boom. Open where? Down, 262.55, market gap down. So you could have got up in the morning today and you could have rated the market gap, okay? To determine if it was a long or a short. Some people went long the market today, which was a bad idea and they shouldn't have done it, but a lot of people actually went long the market on Thursday. Any questions so far? I'm showing you some charts to show you some live stuff here because I think it's important to, to see this stuff happening live because, I mean, like the other one I just showed you was a live gap, but this was really what happened in the market today to see the drop off. Now I'm gonna blow this up, and again, ask me any questions if you have any, but I'm just gonna blow this up here. <laughs> this is a daily chart, and this could be anything, this could be anything at all, but I chose to pick the market because we had a big sell-off today and the market did gap down, and I called it well. But anyways, this is a daily chart. Now you look at the daily chart, 
And a lot of people, when they're trading, when they're looking at trading, they're trying to figure out what to do, want to buy support and they want a short resistance. But the problem is that you cannot consistently make money in the market doing that. I'm not saying you ignore support and I'm not saying you ignore resistance, but I'm saying you cannot use that as a strategy. It helps you take entries. It helps you look at stuff. It helps you look at things and read price action. And I'm not saying ignore that at all, but you cannot use that as a strategy to trade. Otherwise, you will not consistently make money because the market today was a great example from today and last week because the market came into support. This red line here is a 200 period moving average and people bought it. They bought it here. How do I know the market rallied? Market gapped up this day too and it fell. This day we held here, we rallied on Thursday. People were on the market in here, in the support. Boom, they got creamed today. Market fell, market broke this level. Now not everybody got out today. But the point I'm trying to make is that if you had bought the support of the market, it would have been a losing trade. It would have been a losing trade actually almost as soon as you took it. So you can't consistently buy support to make money trading. It's not a strategy. I'm not saying ignore it, but you can't consistently do it. Same thing with resistance as well. And it's something that people just are so stuck on when they're trading and they're, and they're wanting to do stuff. Now, a lot of people say, well, trading is hard and it's hard to do it. And, you know, how do you know what to do? And a lot of people don't know what they're doing. That's true. A lot of people do not know what they're doing. And the fact that, that there's more people that don't know what they're doing than do know what they're doing shouldn't be a deterrent at all for you to trade or learn what to do and do well. Why? I was talking about this in the live trading room this morning. Because the, that, that allows opportunity for you or anyone, anyone at all that sees the potential in the market to profit. Because the field is wide open when you have something that people find challenging to do, where there's lots and lots of money for the taking, for the few that will do it right. And that's how I look at it. When I started trading 10 years ago, it wasn't like everybody said, oh, this is going to be the easiest thing in the world. You know, no one said that to me. But the point is, though, that the challenge of learning how to trade never was a deterrent for me for want, wanting to do it. If anything at all, it was a motivating factor, knowing that so few people trade well. Of course, at the time, I didn't know what I was doing with gaps, and I created my own system myself. And many things that are out there about gaps are wrong. They are, which is one of the reasons that I had to create my own system. And it's true still today. Gaps are very unique. And many people that trade gaps have absolutely no idea what to do and do the wrong thing. So people tend to shy away from them. But I'm more convinced than ever with the calls I've been making in the last year, but really even this year, 2018, because the market's been so volatile and so hard to read, and I've been reading it right, is that I don't think there's any way for you as an individual to make money in the market unless you trade gaps as a strategy because you're not Warren Buffett and you don't have unlimited funds and you've got to get the trades right and you got to win more than you lose and you got to get the timing right too. And even though the market's in a long-term uptrend, it, it is, it is. The market right now is lower, is lower today and, and is lower currently right now. So the market's a short if you're a trader, but if you went long the market last week, you got hurt. And I don't know where we go tomorrow, but the fact is that many people are having trouble with this, these moves of the market. One day it looks higher, then one day it looks lower. You gotta have something called conviction and you better have a strategy and know what to do. But the fact is that the field is wide open, wide open and the money's just there for the taking. Like in the market short I call, and the Amazon one too, the market is there for the taking if you know what to do. The fact that so few people make it should motivate you to do it and learn it right. Because it means that the money that the people make that do it well is going to be a lot. And that is motivating. That should be exciting. That means that if there's so many people out there that are doing it wrong and so few people doing it right, why not decide that you're one of the ones that does it right? It shouldn't be something that's a deterrent. It wasn't for me 10 years ago and it's not even now. In fact, if anything else, the field is wide open more and more and more because this year will be a crazy year for the market and people that know what they're doing are gonna make a crap load of money and people that don't are gonna lose more. So all you have to do is decide what position you wanna be on and where you want to be. But the opportunity is there, it's there for the taking. So 
does anyone have any questions about anything? Overall, in general, you will learn how to read gaps in the market. It is a very specific thing, but it works, and it's how I make these calls. I saw last Tuesday, actually, that the market would do this today, and that, to me, is fantastic. It will always be fantastic. For the next 30 years, if I call trades and running the room for 30 years from now, which I don't know if I will be, it will always be fantastic. Tuesday last week, I saw it, and I called an option trade, and it went, flew flew into the money today. So whether you day trade actively in and out in 30 minutes, whether you want to do options trades, okay, where you're in and out in a day or in and out in a week or a couple of days, you still have to have a strategy. You still have to focus on gaps if you're going to be with me. And you can't just buy support. Tomorrow could be crazy, crazy volatile too. Because I don't know if we immediately follow through and drop with this. Although we could, I don't know if we do. Because I don't know where we're going to get tomorrow morning. I don't know. Here we are again. Now we're up a tiny little bit. See, here we are. We're moving as I'm talking. 257.85. It's not that much up. 31 cents. So I don't know where we gap tomorrow. But I'll read it live in the morning. Any questions? Do you understand anything I'm saying or not? If not, I know it's brand new. I know it's totally new. This is why if you come learn from me, you learn it in the class. If you've been trading before and you've been having success, great. If you're not having success, you might want to learn, you know, what about what I do. There's real money to be made in the market and the field is wide open for people that know how to do it. It's just that many people don't. <laughs> I mean, it is just that many people don't. Does anyone have any questions whatsoever? Where was that one in here? Oh, you know what? Let's look at Facebook. Let's just see what this one's doing tonight. So Facebook fell today. Not off a planet, but it fell. Let's look at Apple. Apple fell today too. Let's look at Netflix. Let's look at all the big movers here. Uh, everyone's quiet. No one's asking questions. You can. Let's see what Netflix did. Netflix. This probably looks the best of anything I've seen here of late. I mean, Netflix is trying to hold itself up. I don't know what it does here, though. It's still not along yet again. But Netflix is Netflix is right now holding up better than anything else in this sector or anything else really I've seen in the market. Does anyone have any questions about anything? If you want a live trial to the trading room this week, email me. We looked at the one here. I don't. I don't know if I'm going to do that tomorrow, though. I, I don't. I don't like things that don't have a, a, even a year history. This is only a couple of months. I'm going to look for something better. But it's it's real. You could rate it here. Now it's under 14. It's back down 13 13.85. Here it is. This switch. Does anyone have any questions about anything at, at, at all? If you're interested in the class special, you've got till tonight. You would get my live trade calls in the room each morning, and you would get the options, which sometimes are throughout the day. You win the option letter, you get it to your email. Boom, you get it, you take the trade. That's how the options work. But the room calls are only in the morning, and we do them live. You be in this room, you ask me questions, I call the trades, I say the targets, when to get out. Today, today was a good example, though, with the market. Honestly, it you know you could have been in it all day, but that's rare. It's not. It's, it's not the norm that the market would power trend all day in a certain direction, but the market did do that, did power trend down today. Open, fell, broke, power trended down all day. Almost into the close, close, two o'clock. Does anyone have any questions? Everybody's quiet. Quiet, quiet, quiet. Listen, I taped tonight. I'm gonna put it on YouTube. Here's my email.
Oh, there I have a question. There, I just have a question. There, there must be something wrong here because it was just that weird thing. Here's the question. All right, here's my email. Um, do, is there a handful of, it's weird, that took three minutes for me to see that, Mimi. Is there a handful of stocks you look at each morning along with the spy? No, it's different every day. I never know what's gonna gap. Is there certain stocks that you rate each day? No, it's different every day. That, there must have been some kind of delay there on my internet or, or, or the Akon, because I didn't see that for three minutes. Uh, is a gap to you the delta, you the delta between daily open and close if price action closes the gap? Okay, there's nothing, than anything in my vocabulary to do with any deltas. So just delete that from everything. All that a gap is, is the difference between the close and open. There's no deltas, there's no nothing. The close of the market is at four o'clock. The open of the market is at 9.30 a.m. It's the difference between the close and the open. That's it. Simple. No deltas, no nothing. It's nothing to do with options. It's nothing to do with day trades. Any daily chart where you see a close and an open with the numbers of variance or difference means the stock's gapping. It could be up. It could be down. Most everything gaps every day, but not everything is playable, meaning predictable. So what I do is I'm predicting I'm predicting before, not before the gap occurs. Like I'm not gonna predict where the market's gonna gap tomorrow. I have absolutely no idea. But I do know when it gaps, I'm gonna predict in the morning when I see the market gapping, which it will gap. I don't know if it's gonna be up or down, but then I can predict it. Like today, I predict the market will fall today. In fact, I sent an email out to everybody on my list this morning. Market's down, market's gonna fall today. In fact, I saw last night in the futures. But anyways, I don't predict the gap. Once the gap occurs, I predict what it's gonna do in the live day. That's the beauty about my system. You will know before 9.30 what you're gonna do. That I prep, I prep in the morning. It takes off the stress. You're still doing the live trades in the day, but you know what you're watching in the morning. And I don't know before I know because I don't know what's gapping until they gap. So you can look at gaps tonight, you can look at gaps in the morning, but I prefer to look in the morning. But there's no deltas, there's nothing. It's a daily chart. Most everything gaps every day, but not every gap is predictable because some are nothing. And actually, most are nothing. You can look at this list and just pull it up on your platform. Boom. <laughs> this is actually tonight here, but say this was the morning, you'd have the ups, that's 20 and 20, that's 40 picks, and then the losses here are the downs. That's 40 picks. So you can just go through them. Boom, boom, boom. And you can go through every one in the morning. But either way, this, you know, half of these could be crap. That's the point of having a system. My class, in my class, you would learn a rating system. It's a 26 point rating system. If the gap rates 20 points or more, you can do it. If it doesn't, you're not touching it. And more things don't rate than do. And I usually do one thing a day, which sometimes you can do more than one. You can do everything that rates well, but I'm telling you, not that many do. That's why the criteria is important, because it's going to prevent you from doing things that aren't anything at all. But most everything gaps. I mean, I don't want to get too technical here, but really, it's very rare that something like, I'm just going to go to Apple here. I mean, it's rare that Apple would close today at 166.68 and open tomorrow at 166.68. I'm not saying that's impossible. It can happen, but I'm saying it's rare. Um, oh, your option deltas. Oh, I thought you were getting into the options. So I was like, um, last Wednesday. Oh my God, that seems like forever ago. What was the date of last Wednesday? Well, let's just go back the last week. Let's go back farther. This day here, we gapped down. The market was a short. This was the most bearish day in the market, which I did say it was on TV. I think I was on TV that day. Yeah, and I said this is a, this is a, the most bearish day the market's had all year. Why? We opened, sold off straight all day, and we gapped down. We didn't go anywhere here. We gapped up, but we didn't go anywhere. This was neutral. Again, that's rare. So the market sometimes doesn't gap, but on this, on, in this case here, we, we really kind of were neutral. Then we gap down. So this was, it was Monday, Tuesday, 
Wednesday, Thursday, we sold off hard here. Everybody panicked in the world. Then this was Friday, I think. Yeah, this was Friday. That was the, here, I'm gonna get rid of this. This was really actually looking really crappy. But then when we opened on the Monday, we rallied and everybody thought it was, everything was fabulous, but I didn't think that. Now I didn't say short the world there, but I knew the market wasn't along. And actually it was on TV that day, that was a week ago. And everyone was like, oh my God, we're up this many points and we're rallying all day and we're rallying and rallying. And a lot of people went long. Then we gapped up in the morning and I didn't think we'd hold and we didn't and we fell. So we fell hard, that was Tuesday. And actually that was the day that I called all of those, all of the puts. I called all those puts on Tuesday and in the market. And then we fell here on Wednesday. So Wednesday we had a small drop, just held neutral. Again, it's rare that the market wouldn't really gap, but to be honest with you, we didn't really, there was nothing really on Wednesday. I called the market lower here Tuesday to follow through in the overnight in the option trade. And it's a day trade, you could have shorted the market here, but we didn't do that. But anyways, this was a neutral gap. There really was no read on the market here on the 28th. The 27th, we fell. Neutral, why? We closed here, we just opened almost right at the area. Closed to 260.60, open at 260.75, so that's really just a neutral gap, 15 cents higher, that doesn't count as an up. And then we rallied here, which was a day everyone was like, oh my gosh, we're gonna hold. That was Thursday, market closed Friday, and boom, that's today. So the 27th was, I think, a Tuesday. If you're asking about the 27th, the market gapped up and I didn't call it as a long. I, that was the day that I called the puts, but we did not short the market as a day trade. Actually, I was off last week, so that's why. But I called puts when I was off last week. I called options trades. And there you have it. So this was a bullish gap up, but it wasn't a long. And this thing here didn't go anywhere. Wouldn't have gone long here and didn't. You stay with the trade, we dropped hard. So you could have gotten out of the market trade today or you could hold it for a bigger move. So it's, this is again, part of money management with trading when you're up, it's the, it's the, it's a, the rule of thumb is one to one for me. It's a good rule. You risk a thousand bucks, you make a thousand bucks. You risk $500, you make $500. I mean, if you can flip around your money 100% and every trade you take, that's, that's good. That's, that's a good trade. Sometimes though, you'll get these crazy, crazy, crazy ones where you will risk 500 bucks and you will make four times the amount and you will make two grand. And sometimes I risk a thousand dollars and make three or four, but it's usually not because I want to hold it for for forever. It's usually because it will just drop off like almost out of the sky. It's hard to hold trades when you're up one flip around, but they do happen sometimes, or they move that quick quick, and they could be two, three, four times the amount. I called Facebook. That was just the gap of the month for March. Day trades in Facebook worked, put options in Facebook worked, and they worked fast, and they worked quick, and they were big trades. So Facebook is a great example where I called a bunch of different trades in this, day trades and options, and they all worked, and they all worked fast. So that can happen, and they were all way more than 100% of whatever you risked. So, and they happened quickly. In fact, I've, I've just lost track how many trades in this I've called. But I mean, that can happen both. But your goal, any in a normal environment, a normal day, a normal trade, you wanna just do it and flip it around once. I don't know if anyone else is running anything that's delayed because there was a delay in the initial thing where I didn't see uh, Mimi's questions or shortlist trader. Does anyone have any other questions? Those were good questions. I don't know where the market gaps tomorrow but no one should be going long back the market in here. So, you know, we're lifting a little bit tonight, which could be some short covering. If we gap up tomorrow and people buy it, I don't think it's a good trade. Even if the market rallies tomorrow, like it rallied Thursday, it's not a good trade. Market isn't ready yet. Market isn't ready yet to go higher. <clears throat> this trader has a question.
And anybody else? It's not, it's what because of the MAs? Nothing's because of the MAs. That was the point I was trying to make earlier because I said people went long in the market last week on the support on the 200 premium moving average. I said, don't do that. So no, nothing's about the MAs. You lost me there. A gap up won't be a buy, but it's nothing to do with the moving averages. Why do you think? Why do you think the market's not a buy here? Anybody, somebody, guess. It's not because of the moving averages. Why is the market, let me just see if there's anything else gapping tonight. Why is the market, shirtless trader has nothing, why? 